So here is the new bike. This is the Canyon Spectral on CF9. So I decided to go for a full-blown e-bike. Um, so I ride with two groups of, of people, some who are full-blown e-bikes that go out for miles and miles and miles, and I struggle to keep up on the Kinevo SL. Um, so I've got this for doing trail riding and riding out with them, and then I'm keeping my Kinevo, which is a bigger travel bike for bike parks and riding with my mates that don't have e-bikes so it works quite well so this is the kind of what I call a mid-season revamp so this bike um has won quite a few awards for direct to consumer brand um a lot of the negatives the the, the cons were with the fox 36 forks the fact i had 155 150 mil at the front and 155 at the rear which was a very weird balance having less at the front than the rear um so what kind of need is they took that feedback and they made some changes so this mid-season revamp you get the fox 38s on there these are the performance elites so the same as the factory just minus the um blingy coating kashima coating um the other upgrades they did as well as upgrading the suspension the other negative was the brakes having the code r's that was also scored it down a few points to put these XTs on. I've not used XTs before. I've had a bez on the street, pulled them on. They seem pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with them. So that's a nice change. Um, what else have they done? It did have a mechanical um, rear Shimano rear mech, but they have actually put on the GX axis system, so electronic gears on there. Um, outside of that, none of the other changes are really substantial. I mean, it's still the, the float, um, Fox Float X shock on the rear. Um, the rims are still the same, it's running on the 350 hubs, um, which are the hybrid ones, hybrid wheels, which are designed obviously for an e-bike. And then it's running on the DHR2 rear tyre, which is a 2.6. Love that rear tyre, that's a rear tyre I run on my bikes. It's just a shame that that's not a double down, it's an EXO Plus. And then the amazing Asagai on the front, again, what I run on the front of my bikes. 3C compound, Max Terra, could have been Max Grip on the front. Um, but that could have been an EXO Plus. If I'm, if I'm being picky, that should be an EXO Plus and it should be a double down on the rear. Again, that's fine as being a Max Terra. So good tyres, but just not quite as good as they could be. HX 1700 hybrid rims, which are really good. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I will um, be going out on this after I've made a few changes. So, the difference between the float um, X. Performance X and kind of the factory. I don't know if there's a performance elite. I've not seen one might be wrong Is you've got the high-speed rebound adjuster, but you're missing any kind of um, Low speed or compression, you know the blue dials. So believe it or not under here is actually all the workings to have that um, You know the, the compression dial in there so rebound and compression, but it's just blanked off. So I've got a 30 pound conversion kit, which will unlock that, make this rear shock more tunable, and minus the um, the coating, Kashima coating, it'll be pretty much the same rear shocks. It's nice that you can just buy that 30 pound dial and the bearings and springs for it and upgrade that. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Bike ship with inner tubes, which surprised me because I didn't know anyone actually used inner tubes anymore. So I've converted them to um, tubeless. And then the last thing to do before I take it out is get it in Visi frame, in Visi wrap, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll be taking it out. So when I've when I finished it all off, got the forks set up, I need to get the forks and the shock set up. I'll take it out for a blast and um, I'll give you my thoughts and feedback and how it compares to the Kinevo SL from a point of view of descending, climbing, Obviously, it's going to be more powerful, but if you're um and around between an SL and a full-blown e-bike, hopefully, because these bikes are so similar in spec, hopefully when I kind of take you through that, uh, that, that comparison, it'll help you decide which bike is for you. I'm going to do a pros and cons of an SL versus a full-blown e-bike. One thing I didn't mention was... I was a bit unaware about this bike because it uses a Shimano EP8. This is the EP801, so this is a revised motor. I would have liked to go for a Bosch. The um, Strive on uses a Bosch motor, but that wasn't in a sale. That was actually more expensive than this with less components. It did have the Bosch motor, but I'm sure for me, going from an SL motor, the Shimano will be more than good enough. Um, Spec-wise as well, I did look at having a um, Levo. 
It's having a Kinea Vasella and a Levo, but when you look at it pound for pound, the spec on this bike, especially in a sale, you get a lot more. For this kind of price point of 5,700 in the sale, retails at, I think, 7.2. For this price, you would be getting a rhythm fork on the Levo, you'd be getting the aluminium frame, you would be getting the GX uh, axis gear, so you do get a lot of bike for your money. And I do like my specialised bikes, and, you know, in all the comparison tests, they seem to compare well it kind of stood its ground against the, the Levo, maybe not as aggressive geometry, but it stood its ground um, slightly less powerful. The motor's a bit more noisy, but if you can cope with those small small elements, um, you get a lot of bike for your money with the Spectral CF, sorry, Spectral On CF9. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching my video.